What's up guys, it's your boy Scorpio with Sins of Mini and we are here to unveil the sew along for my new summer pattern under the Nomi brand. It is Nomi 2047. It is in stores now and available on a PDF, all right? So I hope you guys love this pattern. It is one of my favorites. It is a baseball inspired jersey shirt with some cargo pants and detachable suspenders. It is something that I feel is my best pattern that I have to date, and I cannot wait for you guys to do it along with me, all right? Enjoy the video. If you have any issues, make sure you hit me up on Instagram at Sins of Many, or comment below in the video, all right? Peace. And here we go. All right, so front piece, two pieces, same as always. Let's go. Here we go. These are going to be the pockets. Bottom of the hem is going to be a button closure, which is going to be hidden, of course. All right, this is the back. You're going to cut this once on the fold. This is going to be the collar, the front collar. And you're also going to make two for the collar facing. This is going to be the back collar facing that's going to attach to the collar facing. Just like this. So that's going to form the rim from your back to the front. Here are some sleeves. You're going to cut two of these. All right, some buttons with the hidden placket coordinating thread of course now you're going to use some piping you can use piping again hack ability you don't have to okay this is the upper front piece you're going to have your pocket that's the upper front pocket those are going to be a little smaller this is the gusset that's going to go around the pocket giving it that 3d look and of course any pocket won't be complete without a pocket flap all right this right here is the front pocket facing to the pocket bag you're going to stitch that you're going to flip it over so it can add some sturdiness to form that pocket bag with this piece, which you're going to cut two out of. All right. So this is going to attach to that pocket facing and going to form our front pockets. All right. Now for this bottom piece on the front, I marked it with an F to let you know that it is the front. The back part does look similar to it. OK, here's the upper back piece. And you see how I labeled the lower back piece that's going to be for the legs now i did hack it i did add a welt pocket just because it just feels weird not having anything back there so i had some fabric left over and i did that all right so this is going to be uh the pockets that are going on the sides on the lower front this is going to be just an added technical piece to the front to the bottom of the leg hems waist cord grommets buttons and of course bias tape elastic that is going to go at the bottom and the waist, all right? So I went ahead and surged everything on the raw edges. I drew out my fold line on my front pockets. And of course, you're going to see the spot for the front pocket. That's going to be the hidden button closure, all right? Um, after I do that, like I said, as I surged all the raw edges, that's going to be for the back facing to the front facing. Go ahead and fold on that fold line of your front pocket. Then you're going to stitch it down all right it's going to look just like this but be mindful of that button closure all right you want to go ahead and knock this out next that's going to clip just a bit of it and it should turn out just like this all right the coordinating thread really looks nice with it so if i say so myself all right just as always we're going to connect front pieces to back pieces at the shoulder go ahead and stitch that down five eighths of an inch all right So with the bias tape, now remember the bias tape has a flat edge, has a rounded edge. All right, see the rounded edge? That is the flat edge, okay? You want to put the flat edge to the raw side of your front pieces, okay? Flat edge lined up with the raw side of your front pieces, all right? That's gonna go all the way around. That's gonna give us the piping for this jersey baseball shirt, right? Gonna be looking like this, perfect looks great and of course white makes anything stand out okay so like i said everything wrapped around nicely you're going to <clears throat> the next step is you're going to get that collar piece you're going to get that collar piece you're going to lay that on top and then you're going to stitch that down and you're going to be catching that flat piece of the piping okay so back collar piece a little bit of interfacing right where i'm going to be stitching that's going to be attaching to the uh the front the collar facing see it now with that whole piece, this is where you're going to lay it right there on top on the flat. OK, now with this, I actually used a zipper foot thanks to Bernina, of course, because I had never used a zipper foot before. I can tell you that, but it really does make things much, much easier. And it's crazy. All right. So here's the important part, guys. You just want to make sure you're lining it up. That's why a zipper foot's going to be so 
perfect for this um, and this is my zipper foot um, it's going to be able to catch those rounded edges to make it look just like this now you see how everything is caught perfectly you only have that rounded part the piping that is the purpose of that zipper foot makes it so much better okay so once we attach the collar this is going to be the collar facing that we're going to attach to it here here you get your pocket i'm just going to hold, go ahead and hold it down with some needles just so it can stay in place now yes you can you can base it around i just you know i'm trying to kill two birds with one stone here <laughs> i mean uh, remember your whole placement for the button go ahead and attach that button there too and then you can go ahead and base that down right across on the edge on the side seams you could do so at the bottom if you choose to i went ahead and attached the sleeves because exactly there's nothing fancy about attaching sleeves <laughs> all right this is your standard sleeve raw edges you're going to fold over you could do a double fold um what i did is i went ahead and surged the ends and then i just folded it over once uh just for a clean look now again you can increase as much as you want to all right so once you do that i went ahead and close the side seams make sure you catch that front pocket you could take the needles out now it's going to catch the front pocket and then of course it caught it on the front piece of the collar when you did the piping all right so this is going to be this is going to turn into the hidden placket you're going to turn this over a quarter of an inch you're going to go ahead and iron that down that is going to cover this seam of your collar right where the piping is okay so obviously you wanted a clean finish all right now before we do that though before we do that you got to form the buttons right for the hidden placket so go ahead transfer all the markings over you can see right here transfer those two markings over and now it's going to be a total of three to four you can adjust it however you want to because again they are going to be hidden all right uh, so you don't need it. Obviously, you're not going to be able to see it from the outside like a true baseball jersey, which is what we are going for. OK. Now, once you do that, I added some interfacing to where the buttonholes will be just because I just didn't want to add interfacing to the whole uh, inside collar facing. Uh, but if you want to go by the instructions, please do so. And then once you get the buttons done, they'll look just like this hidden from the inside. Now, once you get those that side done, you got to do the other match those up accordingly, according to the button guide that was provided. And I use these buttons and boom, everything's matching up just so you can get a little close up. Now, everything matches perfectly. You want to make sure that it does. And once you do that, it took me a while. It does feel weird with a hidden placket having to, you know, squeeze the button in, but you get the hang of it. And then boom, everything should line up. The front piece should not be overlaying on the top of the other piping. It shouldn't be hiding it at all. It should look like a baseball jersey shirt. All right. So like I said, search the ends, folded it over. I did, went ahead and did the bottom hem as well because, I mean, this is the easy part. You're just going to be folding that over as well. I know the instructions may say a double fold or fold a quarter inch and then fold again. But you could search, you know, used my Bernina L860 to do so. And it turned out perfectly. Added the label. Bob's your uncle, guys. Now moving on to the pantalones. For the flaps, you're going to cut four flaps, right, of each. Interface one side. You can interface two sides. Depends on the thickness and the sturdiness of your material. I only did one side. Uh, just like before, traced the fold line for the pocket. And then I went ahead and transferred the markings. That's going to be where the gusset is going to attach on both the upper and lower front pockets. Okay. See the fold line transferred it over to the big pocket as well. That's going to be the gusset. Now, again, you see where I said the gusset is going to attach. Those are the markings that you're going to line up. All right. So then what we're going to do at these markings to make sure that we get that rounded edge look that we want, we're going to go ahead and stitch an inch around those markings. And then we're going to snip down, making sure we do not cut into that stitch. This is going to be at the corner, so it's going to give a more rounded corner. I don't really want a square. I want it more rounded. All right. So you go ahead and pin it or if you wanted to base stitch it, you can do so accordingly. But you see how it literally where they snip is going to be right there at the corner. You want to make sure you catch that. All right. So go ahead and stitch it down. I think it was three eighths of an inch per the instructions. You're going to do that to both the upper and the lower front pockets. And then once you do so, it should 
come out looking beautifully like this all right so you see how it's going to form me that 3d look we're catching it at the corner so it's a little bit more rounded more than squared all right same thing with the upper front pockets all right so surge across the top make it all even you can trim down these seams on the inside of the pockets if you want to now what i went ahead and did after i surged it went ahead and you're going to fold down according to that fold line same thing that we did for the top with the pocket just go ahead and fold it and then you're just going to do like a top stitch and then an edge stitch Now from here, you see, went ahead and did an edge stitch, came out beautifully. Now, here's a part where to, to really make the, the 3D pockets pop, you're gonna fold on the seam of the pockets, go ahead and iron down, look at that Mimi G times Oliso iron. All right, go ahead and iron that down. And then you're gonna stitch, edge stitch around the pocket, right? That's gonna make sure that the overlays are gonna be popping up and give it that true 3D look like you see here. All right, now from there, you're gonna fold the outside of the pocket a quarter inch, just like we did uh, before, and then toss that to the side. Now I went ahead and transferred the, the, the drawing for the pocket and for the flap. Now, once you've ironed down a quarter inch on the raw edge of that pocket, the only remaining edge that you got left, all right, you're gonna go ahead and overlay that on top of the markings right now the whole point is you don't want the pocket to be flat all right so you can adjust this accordingly sometimes the markings can be a little wrong especially if you want to go a little bigger go ahead and pin it down you want to make sure that the front pocket is the pin downside that you fold it over is not showing past the front pocket edges right then once you go ahead and stitch down as you can see you see how it gives it that 3d look that's what you want okay now with the flaps one side interfaced right sides together pin that down three eighths of an inch going around the flap then you're going to use your poker turn it inside out make sure the edges are flat iron them down now what we're going to use is we're going to use snap buttons right these are also going to be hidden right handy dandy hammer i went ahead and marked halfway transfer the markings over now I just did it simply because I'm, you know, this is my design. I know it's going to be halfway and I know I want it to be an inch up. Um, again, as you can see, I'm not doing it with the zippers just because I want this to be a different look with the hack. I will do another so long showing how to do it with the zippers. All right. So I used my snippers, poked through the fabric. This is a lightweight denim that I'm using. So that's the reason why I'm using these snippers. Um, and then if you've ever used snap buttons before, it's pretty easy. You have the base. You're going to make sure that you put down the top then you're going to hammer that home and then on the opposite i always wait to do the underside of the snap button the bottom of it uh, once i've actually attached the pockets to the garment itself all right just go ahead and hammer this home and there you have it and again it's a hidden snap button so you won't even see it from the front i just kind of like that aesthetic especially with this military olive green okay so got all the pockets boom added all the snap buttons to the pockets and this is what i was talking about right so now you have your 3d pocket you have that flap line right above it now again of course once you've added the snap button and only after you've added the snap button that's when i surged the top of the flap the raw edges i just went ahead and lined that up with that and then you're gonna base stitch across that Cross the surge stitching and then once you do that iron it down and then you're going to edge stitch right across and then boom you can add the bottom part of your pocket i mean of the snap button to the pocket and look at that we got ourselves done all right now moving on to the pocket uh to the front side pockets now you have your pocket facing you're gonna go ahead and three eighths of an inch stitch that down once you do that you can go ahead and clip the curve then you're going to flip it over yes flip it over and then you're going to iron it down so this is what it should look like real simple now with me i will admit is because i've done this design before the pocket it was a little bit too shallow for me in my hand so i went ahead and made a larger pocket bag and i made the curve uh for the for the for the pocket 
uh, a little steeper all right so attach the pocket bag to it and then you're going to go ahead and connect those stitch that down or you can use a serger that's what i did and this is what it's going to look like once everything matches up don't mind it about the top just go ahead and base that down so it's good and so it stays together all right so front piece real simple now we're in the home stretch we're going to add that to the top front piece Right, so this is just going to add some technicality to the pants, give some dimensions and paneling. Go ahead and stitch that together for closure. I went ahead and surged it, and then I did a top stitch, okay? Moving on to the back piece, I went ahead and formed my welt pocket. Just your typical welt pocket, nothing fancy. Um, just made sure that I didn't want it to be a contrast fabric, so that's why this part is most so important to me. All right, and then once you turn it over, like I said, I had some of that contrast fabric available, which I can make it into a welt pocket and a pocket bag. And yeah, just added a given dimension to the back pocket, which it just seemed weird with not having one. So um, if you need help with a welt pocket tutorial, let me know, holla at me, we can make that happen. All right, so the same thing like I did in the front, attach the bottom to the top. All right, now this, like I said, this is gonna give like a technical patch to the pants. You're gonna put this at the bottom of the hems right there on the side seams just like so now you can base stitch this if you want to you can pin it in place just make sure that when you're attaching that both the side seams you do this accordingly okay uh, you're going to do a three eighths of an inch stay stitch on that and then you're going to clip down you're going to iron that on stitch it down to the inside side seams and then once you attach the side seams together this is how it's going to look you see the the top and the bottom where you attached it how they flow together, that's the technical drawing. That's what matches it perfectly, all right? So now we're gonna do the side big pockets, the same thing that we did with the top front pockets. You're gonna attach it, flap, boom, hidden sap buttons, top stitch, edge stitch, everything came out perfectly. And you got yourself side 3D pockets for the front, man. Now again, I did not do it with the zipper, but we can do it if you need me to all right just a little bit of a hack all right now from this your your leg you're going to attach one leg at a time at the inside seam all right so back to front back to front all right go ahead and stitch that down five eighths of an inch do the same thing with the other leg and then here's what you're going to do you're going to take one leg with the right sides facing you're going to take one leg and you're going to put it inside of the other. So one is going to be turned inside out. The other one is going to be right side um, up. Both are going to be right sides facing. Go ahead and attach that. Right sides facing together. Then go ahead and match the inside seams. And then you're going to go ahead and stitch this. This is going to be the back seam to the front seam. Okay, this is going to be the back seam to the front seam. You're going to stitch together and then I surged it. Now with the waist casing here, you're going to transfer uh, the markings, that's where your grommets are going to be. Went ahead and put a piece of interfacing just to make sure it's sturdy. There's the grommet, the toolkit. Don't mind the callus. Boy's been working in the gym. All right, going to use the hammer. And then your grommets are made. All right. So now that you got your grommets made, transfer these market. That's going to tra transfer these markings. This is where the elastic is going to go in. Now you're going to put both uh, pieces of the waist casing together. Now, mind you, those markings, you're not going to stitch at those markings, okay? So then once you do that, you attach the waist casing to the top of your pants. And then this is how it should look, right? Now, again, I went ahead and surged the, the attachment just because I wanted that clean finish. You wanted to get that out the way early, okay? Don't want to have to weigh that to the end. All right, so there's the opening for the elastic. You're going to go ahead and fold your casing over. And then at the raw remaining edge, you're going to fold that over a quarter of an inch. All right, because that's going to go over the waist, the attached waistband. All right, so that's a quarter of an inch that you're going to be ironing down. And then once you flip it over, you want to catch right there at the waist, but you don't want to worry about the surge lines, okay? So here is what it should look like, an inch and a half. Very clean. And then I went ahead and did a top stitch right across at the waist just to make sure to secure it in place. And the last steps are you're going to use my handy dandy. I have no idea what to call this tool, but I use it frequently. You're going to attach the elastic and you're going to attach the cording. And then all you do is you're going to slip that through the opening of the waist casing that we had. 
And then once you do that, you're gonna get it all the way around and boom, this will be your finished product. All right, go ahead and stitch that opening down. Everything came out perfect. Now, if you want to, just like I did, I went ahead and added a second row of top stitching right above it. All right, so now here's the bottom, right? So went ahead and surged the bottom half an inch, turned it over, transfer the markings. These are gonna be for the grommets too, because remember at the bottom, instead of an elastic cuff that we're gonna do, I'm just going to put a bias tape in there. You can leave it open. This way still gives you the flexibility to um, make it into more of like a jogger look without the elastic cuff, okay? So the same thing that we did, we used the snippers, put the grommets, then I attached, slid the twill tape through, and boom. It just worked perfectly that it matched the, the twill tape matched the color of the pants so worked perfectly now you see how here you can make it look as if it's like a jogger without the elastic look um, that's just one of my many hacks that i did with these pants and i've done all right so and there you have it guys we're done know me 2047 holla at me